Shalom. Giving all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders. A great millstone for teaching this truth that has gone all around the earth. Shalom to the hope of the elect. It's your brother, I'm going to bring a short lesson. And um, this lesson will, will go into, Lord willing, and be edifying, but it'll go into a little bit of this new aged. Uh, new generation of so-called women, all right, here in Babylon the Great. Um, and who you see in front of you is, I believe she's an entertainer. I don't know any of her music. Uh, Janelle Monet, I guess is her name, or his name, or whatever it is, okay? And um, I saw this come up in the news, right? And this person here, young woman, I guess, uh, claims to be non-binary, which I had never heard that term before. So go figure. So anyway, uh, says that she doesn't identify with either gender. And you know this is going off. The Lord made a male and he made him female. See, real simple, real easy, real basic. You know, the Most High made a family unit, which comprises of a, a man, a woman, and offspring, children. You see, now <clears throat> this little clip here has, uh, I guess some of her music playing in it. I'm not going to play it. I'm going to play the, the video, but I turned the music down. Um, I have a little music playing in the background, but I'm not going to play the music to this clip here. But we're going to we're going to watch it. It's a minute and 32 seconds. And in it, there are some quotes that they flash upon the uh, screen. And we'll read a few of those. We'll get a few scriptures. Um, to cut this nigga woman here uh, for going off, all right? Like the multitude of women here in Babylon the Great who, who think they're free to be whatever they want and they can tell the most high what they want to be, okay? They, they, can, they can tell the most high that uh, they get to choose who and what they are, okay? And ultimately, you know, women like like this young woman here, you know, they're all going to be destroyed, okay? They're already destroyed spiritually, right? Or spiritually dead, let's say it that way, okay? But there's going to be a physical punishment that's coming to this place where people are going to be slaved, right? Um where people are going to be put to death, young, old, ugly, cute, whether you identify as a man, a woman, or it. Okay, it's a whole lot of them going to be put to death. So we'll play this little minute and a half clip, and then we'll get into a few of these quotes. And this is just pure wickedness and thinking that she's a star of some type, right? It says what? The singer and actress confirmed being beyond the traditional gender binary. What the hell is that supposed to mean? You see, and this is that new age thinking that these, that these young folks have in terms of like the, 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 the young folks of the world. Everybody is trying to be so different so that they can build themselves in this society. What does it say? Monet, Monet came out as pansexual in 2018. It's like it. Let me let me let me move the camera down a little bit so maybe you can see that. Okay. It's like it. Let me try to adjust it. And this is just utterly ridiculous, man. 
You know, Esau is, I mean, <laughs> man, these people gone. They are gone. It's lock it for all this moving around, but let me try to, I want to get it so that you can see the quotes on the screen. Okay. There, maybe that's a little bit better. All right. I have no idea what pansexual means. So anyway, we'll go on with the with the clip. Here her quote says, I just don't see myself. So like, yeah, I missed that one. I thought it stopped. We'll have to go back here. Let me see if I can pause it on time with their quote. Right. It says, I just don't see myself as a woman solely. You see? It's crazy. I feel all of my energy. I feel like God is so much bigger than the quote he or the quote she. If I am from God, I am everything. And these women today are just wicked. And that's, and you know, that's what we keep warning you all about out there. You know, those who may not be in the truth and you watching all of these different, you know, the lessons of the brothers and stuff. And, you know, you still got one foot in the world or you may even still have both feet in the world and you just watching the prophets just to kill your time or whatever. We don't warn you about all this stuff that's going on in the world. Right. But here's another quote. I am everything, but I will always, always stand with women. I will always stand with black women, but I just see everything that I am beyond the binary. It ain't, no, ain't nothing but some witchcraft and bullshit. You see? But see, they do this to gain the world. You know? And you can freeze it. I'll just do it that way. You can freeze it and, and, and read it on your own if, if I can get it in there. You know, get the uh, quote in there. They keep changing the angles. Okay, or you can go out there and see the story on your own. But this is just this is just outrageous, man. You know, the nigga woman is just. You just get tired of seeing it, you know, you get vexed in the spirit by watching these. Freaking losers, you know. Uh, pretty much just prosper in the world. We know what's going to happen, but, you know. It still, nonetheless, it still makes you angry to a certain degree. And then they had a story on this nut right here, okay, in which I can't take her. I got, I, I got to leave off from that, okay. So let's get, let's get a few scriptures. So these people are all a bunch of mixed bag of nuts, you know. They, they, they're born one thing and say that they're whatever they want to be, and we know that that's what's going on in even the public school system. And they trying to make this abnormal thing normal. And I mean, pretty much it is now, okay, to, 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 to the younger crowd, okay, this is normal. So this is Romans, and, you know, it seems to be that, uh, for me anyway, you know, these scriptures <laughs> keep coming out, all right? So this is Romans 126. And I'm just going to jump in and we'll we hit the points and we'll be done. You know, there's no need to belabor it. It's Romans 1 and 26. For this cause, the Most High gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And that's what she's saying. She's non-binary. She can be whatever she wants to be. She identifies with whatever she wants. I guess, hell, like, Today you want chicken, tomorrow you might want steak. I guess that's how she looks at it. Okay, verse 27. And like, and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burning in their lust one toward another. 
men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain the Most High in their knowledge, the Most High gave them over to a reprobate mind. And that's what that's the kind of mind these people have in the world. Okay. Just ungodly, you see, to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, uh, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, uh, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of the Most High, the spiteful, proud, and a lot of these women we know on this side are extremely proud. Boasters and inventors are evil things, and that's an evil thing that Esau invented, right? And here Jake is 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 sopping it up like 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 biscuits and gravy. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of the most high, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them right. Trying to create a whole culture to go up against the most high. Now, of course, this is talking about, you know, something else, but we can, we can use this, you know, talking about those who, who know the truth, been in the truth and left it and went back into the world to do all these ungodly things, right? All these unrighteous things and fornication and wickedness and covetousness, right? But when you look at the world, that's what you see in today. Okay. There are plenty of those celebrities and entertainers who know the truth, right? But they much rather stay in the world, all right? Which, you know, hey, we ain't mad. That's their lot, you see? And as the Lord said, just like in the days of Noah, right, and in the days of Lot, so shall it be in, in, in the day when the Lord shall return. Okay, paraphrasing it. So let's look at Luke 17 and 28. And it reads, Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And that's what's going to happen here in Babylon the Great. Okay. Verse 30, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Okay. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife, right? And Lot's wife looked back, turned into a pillar of salt, but she looked back. In anguish, really, you know, looking at the place where she's leaving, she was fond of it, right? She liked that place. Okay. Let's go on to the next scripture and then we, we'll wrap this up. I don't want this to be all that long. But we'll get the point, you know, the you know, that young woman there, man, just gone. And you got a lot of women out here that are like that. This is Second Peter 2 and 4. For if the Most High spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, yeah, put them in the chains of darkness in this flesh, this current flesh, right? And spared not the old world, but saved Noah and eight persons, the eight persons, like you, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And that young woman is ungodly. Okay. Verse 6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And evidently, they don't pay attention to the words of the Lord. They don't read the scriptures. They don't understand the scriptures. Because had they, had they read the scriptures and understood the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, perhaps, perhaps, they wouldn't be living a 
lascivious lifestyle, okay? Uh, a lifestyle without restraint or rules, if you will. Verse 7, and delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelleth among them in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. And Babylon has really gotten to Jake over here, okay? Verse 9, we'll finish it out. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished, right? So when those nuclear weapons start flying off and the Most High sent his son back with the armies of heaven and start zapping and lasering and blowing up shit, okay? We'll see if her pansexual uh, nature or attitude as she claims she has will deliver her. Okay, let's get into uh, the definition here. And it says binary, non-binary, salakia. It says uh, not relating to, composed of, or involving just two things, right? which I had never heard this term before. So it says uh, denoting and relating, come on here, denoting and relating gender or sexual identity that is not defined in terms of traditional binary opposition, such as male and female or homosexual and heterosexual. Just a bunch of fucking madness. Definition two, relating to using or de denoting a system of numerical notation that does not have two as a base, which I'm sure that's not what it's applying to. It's applying to that first definition, right? And this is part of Esau's pseudoscience, right? Coming up with all kind of shit made up, okay, here, pseudoscience, pseudoscience. Pseudo what does it say, a system of theories, people theorize what they believe they are, right, what they want to be, what they think they are, assumptions, and methods are erroneously regarded as scientific, you see, coming up with all this weird shit, okay? It's erroneous. Here, let's see what this one says for uh, pseudoscience. See if it plays. Yeah. It says a collection of beliefs or practices mistakenly regarded as being based on scientific method. See, because these people get into all this other shit about their feelings and what they think. You know what I mean? That's, that's Esau's shit. Anyway, she's a wicked ass fucking woman. So let's get our, get our scriptures for these damn women. All right. And it, like I said, this is coming out more and more. Every time you turn around, we got to read these script, you know, these scripts. So this is um, Salakia. Ecclesiasticus 25. All right. In the Apocrypha. And we scroll down here to verse 12. And it reads, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love and faith is the beginning of his of cleaving unto him give me any plague but the plague of the heart and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman right and and if you're going to play both sides of the fence and you don't identify with any gender whatsoever who the fuck can love you you can't be trusted 
See? Verse 14. And, and any affliction, but the affliction from them that hate me and any revenge, but the revenge of enemies. There is no head above the head of a serpent and there is no wrath above the wrath of an enemy. I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. The wickedness of a woman changes her face and darkens her countenance like sackcloth. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors and when he heareth it shall sigh bitterly. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. As the climbing up a sandy way is to the feet of the age, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudent, and much reproach. You know, she would never bring anybody any happiness. You see? Verse 22, a woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudency, and much reproach. A wicked woman abated the courage, maketh a heavy countenance and a wounded heart. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress maketh weak hands and feeble knees. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. And these women over here in Babylon are great, are filled with sin. You see, taking on the freak world of Esau, Edom. Verse 25, give the water no passes, neither a wicked woman liberty to gather abroad. And as you can see, she fashions herself as a model, as a singer, a performer, an actress. And them people in that world, man, they, they, they freaks anyway. So really no surprise here. But like I said, I, I saw the story and I, I kind of remember her from a movie. I think it was that movie, but the, uh, I can't think of it now, with the women who work for NASA. I can't think of that movie, but I believe she played a part in there. Okay. Uh, verse 26, if she go not as thou wouldest have her go, cut her off from thy flesh and give her a bill of divorce and let her go. Now, it's probably unlikely that she would even marry marry a man, you know. That kind of shit she's doing is like she would marry a woman who want, who transitioned to be a man, some shit like that, you know. This place got to go, man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking fed up with this shit. Oh, boy. Come on now. Ecclesiastes 26. This shit is just real tiring. Starting at verse 7. An evil wife is a yoke shaken to and fro. He that hath hold of her is as though he had a scorpion. A drunken woman in a gather abroad causes great anger, and she will not cover her own shame. And these people don't think that they're, you know, there's no shame to them. As the old saying goes, there's no shame to their game. You see? Verse 9, the whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. And that's these women with these big old eyelashes, these painted faces, right? These wigs, these blonde wigs, the, the, the damn uh, uh, plastic surgery, fake boobs, fake butts, fake nails, you know? And, and, you know, Israelite women, for the most part, were always, you know, had a nice body on them. Yeah, you might find some that, eh, you know. But nowadays, these young women, they they don't care. They go under the knife to get this, what was that girl's name? Um, Salakia. That other chick that used to rap. Uh, 
her name slips my slips in my mind right now, but she was a rapper, the one that called herself a Barbie doll. Uh, um, Nicki Minaj, <laughs> Slocky. Yeah, you know, they want to get this, this perfect body, you know. And then you got the other uh, uh, trashy girl that was with Meg Thee Stallion. Cardi B, you see? And this is what the younger girls are looking up to. All right? Going to perpetuate the wickedness, you know, until the end comes. See? We go back to verse 10. If that, I mean, verse 9, the whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. Watch over an impudent eye and marvel not if she trespass against thee. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he hath found a fountain and drink of every water near her. By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. Right. And you know, these women are real loose and they'll, they'll do some of anything, you know. So pretty much that's it for the lesson, you know. A um, whole lot of weird mess going on out there, right? Like with this chick here, you know. Look at that. See? And this is this is what our young women have to look at. And, and they're proud. You know, they're proud of what they're doing. At least they repent, man. They ain't got nothing but destruction coming to them, you know. And all that want to live and be like them. With that, I'm going to end the lesson right there. I'm going to give all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakak, Madash. Double honor to the apostles and elders, a great millstone. Shalom to the hope of the elect out there. I'll see you in another lesson real soon, Lord willing. Shalom.